How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at the Dragon and the Freckled Princess, otherwise known in the English-speaking world as Belle. Written and directed by Mamoru Hosoda and starring the voice talents of Kylie McNeil and Paul Castro Jr. McNeil voices Suzu, a high school student who many years ago witnessed her mother saving a young child's life at the cost of her own. As one might guess, this event did not have the most positive impact on her life, and socially she is all but shut down. One day she is invited to join the virtual world known simply as You, and she adopts the identity Belle, which is basically the English translation of her name. And in this virtual world, she is finally able to come out of her shell. She regains her ability to sing and even becomes something of a digital celebrity. Then she meets someone in you known simply as the Dragon, who has been causing other players a lot of grief. And he has some moderately douchey vigilante superheroes of sorts trying to stop him and reveal his true identity. Suzu tries to find out more about the dragon before the aforementioned moderately douchey vigilantes, and it turns out he may not be as bad as he seems. This story is very loosely based on Beauty and the Beast, though obviously a more modern take on the tale. I don't believe they had the internet in the 1700s. Really, it incorporates elements from Beauty and the Beast into a new story about the internet and viral fame and all the angsty bullshit that is high school, the trauma of losing a parent, or wishing you could lose a parent because that parent is an abusive prick. I did like how the digital avatars in you are created. Basically, they are based on the physical and psychological makeup of their users. So these avatars hide who you are, but also reveal who you are, if that makes sense. And Belle allows Suzu to show off who she really is, or at least who she was before her mother passed away. It also reveals quite a bit about the dragon, who is the beast in this version of the story, and has a kind heart, but it's just buried under so much unbridled rage. And the leader of the aforementioned moderately douchey vigilantes is basically the Gaston character. He's the kind of person who fancies himself the hero of the story, but really he's just a selfish asshole. There are some genuinely funny moments in this movie. There's a great scene where two of Suzu's classmates discover they actually have a shared romantic interest in each other, but they are just criminally incapable of expressing it. It was just so awkwardly hilarious. It also gets a bit depressing at times, especially when it comes to the dragon, but I won't give too much away there. The animation is excellent. It's very bright and colorful throughout the world of you, until, of course, we get to the dragon's domain, and then it's very dark and brooding, much like the dragon himself. It is also batshit insane. The digital avatars that the various players in you create take up every form you can possibly imagine, and even some you can't. In one of Belle's concert scenes in this movie, she is riding a flying whale with a bunch of speakers mounted on its sides. That had to have originated from a Mad Lib. It's like a child's version of the Doof Wagon from Fury Road. Speaking of concerts, there is a fair amount of music in the movie as well, but honestly, it didn't do a whole lot for me. It wasn't bad, it was fine, it just didn't really have anything that grabbed me the same way as, well, let's say Encanto. Although part of that may be that it just didn't translate very well from Japanese, I don't know. Overall, I thought this was pretty good. It's the first new movie I've seen for 2022, and I'd say the year is off to a good start. And I highly recommend checking this out if you have not already done so. And that's all I have to say about Bell. Till next time, take care.